In this video, I'm going to show you how I make my DIY desktop CNC machine mill metal faster. The online machining speeds and feeds calculators are geared towards industrial grade machines that are very rigid and can take high loads. But they do not work for DIY or desktop CNC machines or routers. So I'll talk about how I found the right speeds and feeds to push my machine to its limits. I will demonstrate this by pushing my own machine until it won't be able to take it anymore. The logic and the method followed here will apply to any CNC machine but more specifically to any desktop or hobby type of CNCs. In my previous video, I built a desktop DIY CNC milling machine. I was able to machine aluminum and steel with it, but I wasn't able to utilize the full potential of the machine. Since then, I have made a few upgrades to the machine and worked on finding the right speeds, feeds and other machining parameters. Before we jump into actual machining, let's take a look at the theory that will help us to get to our goal of machining faster. Please stick with me here. I assure you, it will be worth it. The machining performance is all about the chips, their size or thickness, shape and even color for certain metals. When the tool rotates and engages with the material, it takes a bite out of the material forming a chip. The thickness of the chip depends on spindle RPM, feed rate, radial depth of cut or step over, number of flutes on the tool and many other factors. Assuming that we are changing only one of these factors at a time and all other factors remain the same, the chip thickness can be increased by reducing the spindle speed or by increasing feed rate or by reducing the number of flutes on the milling cutter or by increasing the step over. These are shown here on the right side of this arrow representing the direction of increasing chip thickness. If you keep increasing the chip thickness by using any or all of these factors, eventually the chip load will become too high resulting in several problems like the tool clogging or breaking, motor skipping steps, spindle jamming etc. Essentially, this is the literal case of biting more than you can chew. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if the chip thickness is too low, the tool can turn into a sandpaper resulting in the tool just rubbing against the surface of the workpiece and not cutting any material. We want to find the middle ground and that is the crux of what we are trying to do here. There is one more important aspect to dialing the speeds and feeds which can affect the entire process drastically and that is the tool paths. I am going to use adaptive clearing or high efficiency milling HEM tool paths throughout. The idea behind these is that the tool traverses in arcs during cutting rather than straight lines. This ensures that the chip thickness remains uniform throughout the cut. An example of the adaptive clearing tool paths is shown on the right here while one on the left is regular straight line tool paths. The aim in adaptive clearing is to reduce the radial load on the tool by reducing the step over or the width of cut but drastically increasing the feed rate and using very high axial engagement to achieve high material removal rates. High axial engagement entails that a very large length of our tool is cutting the material and not just the tip. So we want more of the example on the left rather than the right. This is super useful to improve material removal rate not only in large industrial machines but also in smaller machines which do not have the rigidity to take high radial loads. Now that you know the theory behind the secret, let's see if it actually works in practice by making some chips. Here, I have three separate attempts in which aluminum is being machined. The goal here is not to give you specific numbers because they can be different for different machines depending on their rigidity, spindle capacity, etc. But it is to show you the trajectory and the logic followed. From left to right, the chip thickness is being increased for each successive attempt. For the first one, I have a spindle speed of 12,000 rpm, feed rate of 8 inch per minute or 200 mm per minute, overlap or radial depth of cut of 20% which comes to 5,000 and an axial depth of cut of a quarter inch or 6.35 mm which amounts to the full diameter of the quarter inch tool. The overlap of 20% is higher than usual for adaptive clearing. Usually it is recommended that we use 8 to 10% and make up for these lighter cuts by increasing the feed rate but I am using 20% just because I want to push the machine. Once I know the limit, I can back up the overlap and increase the feed rate and I will show that later in the video. This is what the surface finish looks like for the first attempt. For the next one, the chip load has been increased by doubling the feed rate to 16 inch per minute. The machine seems to handle this well without any issues. Here is a look at the surface finish. 
further increase in the chip load by increasing the feed rate also seems to be working fine but we are starting to hear chatter noises right when the tool engages with the material at the start of the cut. As mentioned earlier, the chip load can also be increased by increasing the overlap. We were already at a very high value of 20%. Let's see what happens when we bump it up to 40%. It seemed to be doing fine in the beginning but the chips were extremely hot. I know that because one of them fell on my hand and very soon this happened. The tool clogged up. This was quite expected. We really tried pushing the machine. But here is the beauty of adaptive milling. We can drop down the overlap or radial depth of cut to 12% or 3 thou and bump up the feed rate. In this case, I am doubling the feed rate to 48 inch per minute which is twice that of what it was in the previous attempt when the tool clogged. So we will lighten the cut but move fast. And it manages it just fine. This is awesome. Ideally, we would have liked to go faster than this, but I know my stepper motors will start skipping steps for any higher speeds. But for a desktop DIY machine, this is great and very satisfying. I hope this helped clear the logic I'm trying to use in coming up with the speeds and feeds and other parameters. Let's translate this to steel. We know that steel is much harder and tougher material than aluminum. The steel I'm using is 304 stainless steel. It is a very notorious material for machining. So we need to take lighter cuts for sure. As mentioned in the theory part earlier, one way to do it is to increase the number of flutes on the cutter so that each cutting edge is taking a shallower bite of the material. So I'm using a four flute cutter here. It also helps to keep the load on the tool more uniform. I thought that using a four flute cutter, reducing the overlap to 10% or 2.5 thou and reducing the feed to 8 inch per minute would reduce the chip load enough for the machine to handle it. But it did not like that at all. The tool gummed up immediately. Let's dial it back a bit more by reducing the spindle speed to 7200 rpm which will allow us to take an even lighter cut. Okay, that is not bad at all. You might have noticed that I have reduced the actual depth of cut as well. This is not because the adaptive clearing won't be able to handle it. The point of adaptive clearing is to use a high actual depth of cut. But I just wasn't sure if my ramp value, which is the speed at which the tool gets to the actual depth of cut, was accurate to allow my tool to be plunged to such a high depth without it being catastrophic. Throughout all the attempts so far, I have been using a very slow ramp feed of 2 inch per minute or 50 mm per minute. So I'm sticking to this low value of actual depth of cut for now. Once I'm more confident in my ramp values, I will increase the actual depth of cut. You will see that in a bit. With that attempt being successful, I used the adaptive clearing principle again. As you might have already guessed, I reduced the step over this time to 8% or 2 thou and sped up the feed rate to 12 inch per minute. As expected, that worked very well. Now I can try ramping the tool to the full actual depth of a quarter inch to increase the actual chip load. Awesome again. The desktop DIY CNC was able to mill a very notorious steel at a decent material removal rate. Now we can apply the process parameters that we have developed and create an example part. I have chosen a part which will require a pocketing, hole machining and a profiling operation. First we will do the pockets with adaptive clearing. This is followed by the hole. Both these operations are using the adaptive clearing parameters that we developed. The last one to be done is the outer profile. The outer profile cannot use adaptive clearing. The entire tool has to engage with the material in such cases. So I have to go extremely slowly for it at a feed rate of 4 inch per minute and an actual shallow depth of cut of 16th inch. And there you have it, a finished part. It comes off the machine with these tabs. After some filing, this is what the end result looks like. If you liked the explanation in the video and got anything out of it, please like and share the video and comment below to let me know. And subscribe to the channel. Also check out my video in which I made this machine. See you next time.